Baker snack. Assembling the Waveshare DC motor driver hat for Raspberry Pi with Circuit Python. Hello, bot builders. So our Raspberry Pi doesn't know how to communicate with our motors right out of the box. So what we're gonna do is we are going to add a Waveshare DC motor driver hat for the Raspberry Pi. Now there are a lot of products that can do what we need to do, and I've got another video showing an Adafruit product, but I chose to give this product a try here because it's very inexpensive, it fit nicely over the Pi Zero, and most importantly, it didn't require any soldering. So we're going to wire our hat up, and we're gonna attach it to the two DC motors that came with our mini round robot chassis kit. We're going to write a little bit of Python code to check things out. We're gonna to need to make some very small modifications to the CircuitPython libraries in order to get them to work with the Waveshare hat. We're gonna give them a little bit of power, and we should see the motors run as expected. So let's get at it. Now in the box for the Adafruit mini round robot chassis, we've got these two DC motors. So why don't we take those out of the bag and uh, if you take a look at the end here, you'll see that each motor has two female connectors in there, little sockets, and one is attached to the red wire, the other is attached to the black wire. So the reason why you need to have four jumper wires is we are going to insert the pins of two of those jumper wires in and we'll match up red to red and black to black as, as best as we can. You can actually use any color wire, it doesn't matter, um, but it's just a little bit easier to keep track of which wire is which when we match them. We'll attach the other red and black wire to the other motor and the pins on the other end are what we're going to insert into the motor hat. Now if you hold the motor hat up like this, you can see that the terminals are labeled MA1, MA2, and MB1, MB2. Those are the four that we're going to loosen up. So take your flathead screwdriver, you don't have to loosen them all the way so that the screw comes out, loosen it up just enough so that the little metal panel on each terminal slides up so that you can insert the pins into them. And that's what I'm doing right here. So I put the red into MA1, the black into MA2, and those are for my right motor. And you can do these one at a time and tighten them up enough so that the wires aren't going to come out when the bot is moving around. By the way, if you find that a wheel is going backward when you think it should be going forward or vice versa, you can just switch the red and the black wire here. Also, if you find that your right wheel is your left wheel and vice versa, you can just switch the A's and the B's. There's also ways to do this programmatically, but it's totally fine to switch these wires. Now I'm using the 4AA battery holder with the on-off switch you see here. You also want to make sure that you get the one that's got these two pins at the end. That's going to make it really easy for us to insert this into the Waveshare hat. Um, now if you use the Waveshare and you want to use rechargeables, I'd recommend a 6 battery case. Also get it with the on-off switch. It's kind of tough to find them though that have the jumper pins on them. Another tricky thing is that um, you know most grocery stores or hardware stores will sell rechargeable batteries in this four battery recharger and so you need to get two of these if you want to recharge six of them at a time. Now here's a look at where the power pins from the battery pack are going to go. The red will go into the one that's labeled VIN and it's labeled underneath and the black will go into the one that's labeled GND for ground. Now unfortunately the folks at Waveshare stopped just short of what I would really have liked them to do which is to add a terminal like this over here for the power and the ground pin. Now if you want you can buy a terminal and solder it on yourself. The terminals themselves cost less than a buck. There are only two soldering points that you need too. And I've got an example of the terminal that you'd want to buy in the web page that accompanies this video. But I also really wanted this project to be one where you didn't have to do any soldering at all. And having pins that are exposed like this that could potentially touch and short, that's not really the best for our electronics project. Now if you look around you might find some additional parts that'll attach these pieces with no soldering. But one of the hacks that was offered on the Adafruit forums was to just stick toothpicks in here. And you can see from the images I've just jammed a little bit of toothpick in between the pin and the solder point. So that makes the connection tight. The metal is going to metal, but it also means that these things aren't going to move around. Now, another thing that I did was I took a little piece of foam and stuck it in between these two pins. And if you wanted to be super secure, you could put a little piece of electrical tape around the part of the pin that's poking through it to try to ensure that the metal of one pin never touches the other one. And now that we got everything wired up, let's go ahead and download some software so we can get this bot moving. Command space, type in terminal, press enter, terminal launches. I'm going to do shift command plus a few times to make my screen bigger. Move it to the upper left hand corner. I'm going to SSH in and that's going to be SSH space pi at zero bot dot local for me because my bot is named zero bot. Yours might be different. Type in your password, log in. And once you're logged in, open the web page up that accompanies this video. The link's in the description. And what's good about this is we've got a bunch of commands we can copy and paste so we don't have to worry about typos. So for our first step, why don't you scroll down here and find this line that says sudo space pip3 space install space adafruit dash circuit python dash motor kit highlight that copy it move over to the terminal 
paste it in with a command V, press return, and that software will start to install. And like some of the installations that we do on our Pi, this one might take as much as a minute before we actually see some progress happening. So just be patient, but you'll see things moving. And I've sped this up so that you don't have to sit around and wait for mine to install. But once yours is installed, return to the web page and find this line down here that says sudo space nano space, and then that starts with slash USR. Now what that's going to do when we type this in is we're going to open up the Adafruit underscore motorkit.py library. And what we need to do is we need to modify Adafruit's really great software library so that it works with the slightly different hardware of the WaveShare hat. So Highlight this line here, Command C, let's go back to the terminal, Command V to paste it in, press return, and inside of Nano, what we're going to do is press the down arrow to go through about nine screens worth of information. And I mentioned on the webpage that accompanies the video uh, what we're going to be doing. So we're specifically going to be looking for the definition for the Python function called motor one. So you see how it says def space motor one and specifically look for motor one because there's a motor without the one beforehand. And once we find that function, what we're going to do is go down a couple more pages and we're going to look for the return statement of that function. That's this one that says return self motor. And what we're going to do is we're going to change the three pin numbers in between the parentheses. And again, it's just because that the Adafruit hardware is a little bit different from the WaveShare hardware. So we're going to change the numbers 8, 9, and 10, and just the numbers. We want to keep the commas in there, the spaces in there, the parentheses in there. And we're going to change those numbers to 0, 1, and 2. So again, now I'm back in the terminal, I'm in nano, I'm gonna press the down arrow and keep holding it down until I go through one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and right about seven is where it says def underscore motor, but we want motor one, so that's two more down, and then keep going until we hit this return statement, and that's just before we get to this property def motor two. So you don't wanna go beyond that, and this is where we're going to change the eight, nine, and 10, to, it's going to be again 0, 1, and 2. And so we've just changed the return statement for this motor1 function. Again, don't get bogged down in the specifics of Python, but below this we have this thing that says def motor2. This is the second function that defines the second motor. And we just need to change three numbers that are in the return statement for this one. And I've identified this in the web page that accompanies the video. So what you're going to do is go down for two screens until you find where it says self underscore motor two and where it says 13, 11, and 12. Those are Adafruit's numbers. We're gonna change those to five, three, and four. Those are WaveShare's numbers. So all we do is make two changes in two lines and Adafruit's great software is gonna work with a WaveShare hat. So now let's head back over to our terminal program and go down two pages and find the return statement and that should be the next return statement that you find and we're going to change those numbers 13 11 and 12 to 5 3 and 4 and once we've done that, then do control X to exit nano, do a capital Y to save our changes. And the astute observer might say, hey, this is not the name of my file. Well, it is there. It's just so big that it goes onto the other screens. No, you don't have to type a left arrow, but if you do, you can see that the name of the file is there, but you don't have to do that. You could just press enter. It will save it. And congratulations, you've just modified the Adafruit Motor Kit Python library so that it works with the WaveShare hat. And now there's just a bit of a jump cut here because I've modified the video, but if you scroll down on our web page, you will see that the next thing that we need to do is to create a Python 3 program called pybottest.py. So highlight this line so that we can create the new program in nano, copy it with a command C, head back over to the terminal. Again, uh, your terminal is going to look different from mine because I jump cut and I had to return to these steps but command V to paste, press enter to get into nano. Uh, we will create a new file in nano. It's gonna have the name pybottest.py. Now let's head back over to our web page, and you see the next thing that we've got down here is the URL for our GitHub repo. And again, this has all the files that are associated with this project. So I'm gonna right click on this, open it up into a new tab, and I'm gonna look for the name of the file that we wanna create. Now that's this file here called pybottest.py. 
Now we'll eventually paste this code into the Raspberry Pi, but let's talk through the code first so that we know what we've got here. This first statement, the from statement, imports the motor kit. So that's the library that will allow us to write Python code and manipulate the motors. The next line, kit equals motor kit, creates an object so that we can now use that to refer to our motors. Two lines below, we see a line which is almost identical to this, but it's got 0x40 in it. And when we get to nano, I'm gonna point out that because you're using the Waveshare hat, this is the line we're gonna to wanna to use. So we're actually gonna switch the pound signs to comment out the line above and to uncomment the line below. We're gonna need the time library as well, so we import time. Now this motor kit object that we created that we called kit, we can refer to both of our motors using dot notation. So by saying kit.motor1, we're referring to the first motor. Kit.motor2 refers to the second motor. And the dot throttle that we have after here says, turn on that particular motor full speed. So 1.0 is full speed. Now, if we've turned on both motors using the throttle command, we need to figure out how long we want to run the motors for. So what I put down here is time.sleep, and the one inside says sleep for one second. So that means the code has to wait around for one second. Now, it's going to wait for one second while the motors run. Now, what we do after that one second is by saying kit.motor1.throttle0, and the same thing for motor2, what we do is we essentially shut off the motors. So we turn on the motors, full throttle, then we wait one second, then we turn the motors off and time sleep says okay keep them off for one second so now let's scroll up a bit so we can see more of our code and now that you know the pattern you can probably figure out what the rest of this code is going to do now in the next block we set our motor one throttle to 0 0.5 but look down below we set motor two's throttle to negative 0 0.5 now what do you think that does it runs the motor backwards at half speed so assuming we've got our wiring right the left motor going forward at half speed the right motor going backward at half speed is going to turn the robot to the right then we say time sleep two. So what that's going to do is it's going to run the motor while the program waits for two seconds. And then right underneath there, we set both throttles for motor one and motor two to zero. That's going to stop things and we're going to stop them for three seconds. So now we'll give ourselves a little bit more room to look at the third block of code here. And feel free to pause right here to challenge yourself and think through, hey, what's this next block of code going to do? And then when you unpause, we'll talk through it together and unpaused. So the first two statements that we have here set motor one and motor two's throttle to negative 75. So if you know that the throttle sets the power behind the motor, a negative 75 should make the motors run backwards at three quarters power. Then the motors run while our program sleeps for two and a half seconds. And then after that time is up, we turn off the throttle on both of the motors, and then we put the program to sleep for one second. So we have a one second pause. Then we go down to the next line, and you can see we're gonna turn on the left motor, or motor one, at full speed, and we're gonna set the second motor to only one quarter speed backwards. And so what this should do is it should turn to the right. And now it's gonna do that turn for three seconds, and then we're gonna shut off the motors. And we don't have to wait after this because our program is done and our motors are shut off. You always wanna make sure that you've shut off your motors, otherwise your motors will keep running because you've never shut them off. So now let's highlight all of the lines of this code that we just went through. We'll do a Command C to copy, minimize our browser, head back over to the terminal, Command V to paste it in, and here is all our code. Now, because we're using the Waveshare motor hat, I'm gonna press the up arrow here. I wanna point out again that one change. So every time you write some code that works with your motor hat, um, instead of doing this line here where it says kit equals motor kit with open and close parentheses, I'm just going to put the uh, number sign and then a space right in front of it. So that means comment this line out. So nothing after the number sign or the pound sign executes. Then I'm gonna go down to two lines below here where it says kit equals motor kit and then in parentheses, it's 0x40. Now by removing the pound sign here, I've uncommented this line. So I've essentially said, hey, run this line and don't run this line. Then we'll do a control X. We'll uh, make sure that we save the code and we're back at the prompt. So now how do we execute our code? We type in Python 3 and then the name of the code that we want to execute, which is pybottest.py. Make sure that your Pi is on, your power is on, you got fresh batteries, everything is wired up. Then if you press enter in the terminal, your program will run and your motors will go. Full speed one second, one second wait. Forward, backward, half speed for two seconds, three second wait. Backward at three quarter speed for two and a half seconds. One second wait, forward full speed, backward at a quarter speed for three seconds, and stop. Now one last thing, if you were an astute observer, you probably noticed that that motor that was set to go backwards at quarter speed didn't move. 
Well, these motors need about half power to be able to move. That's either half power in a positive or a negative direction. If you don't have that, the motor might not move. So just keep that in mind. But you should feel incredibly proud. You are a bot programmer. Let's go ahead and build that bot chassis, and then we'll write our app.